find that when you work with any joint, you're looking first to extend out of it so that you can then be able to rotate the bones within that joint one way or the other, all right? So if you find that you get stuck in turning, let's say, let's all start in Baddha Konasana for a moment, all right? To support the lift of your chest, have your hands on the back corners of the blanket. Make sure your feet are far enough away that you can sit upright easily. And so as you begin to lift and lower an, a leg, and we'll alternate between one leg and the other, almost like you're opening and closing a book. And you can use both the contraction, right? As you lift a leg, you're contracting typically the inner groin when you lift a knee, but also remember to use the outer thigh also. Right, so it's a dual process. You're taking the outer thigh from the outer hip towards the outer knee as well as contracting on the inside here. So as you reach up from the outer hip towards the outer knee, you're creating space. Descend the inner groin. So you're using more than just what naturally shows up when you start to move, all right? So you're creating a little bit of fluidity you have a very open diamond between the heel of your foot and the blanket. Keep a nice strong lift through the chest, the inner elbows reaching back so your shoulders are starting to open up. So right now, if you are starting to notice that there is a little bit of a pinching in your inner groins or in your hips, it may mean that you need to take your feet a little further away. So try taking them a little further away and notice what happens there, right? Now, if it's really easy for you, you can always take the heels of your feet a little closer. Because I was starting to feel a little pinchy, and now I'm noticing that this is working in a much smoother place. And I could feel the outer knee moving towards the inner knee as a directive quality. So if you get creative when it comes to these places of tightness, then it can work a little bit better. Now take your hands to your outer knees, and as you press the hands into the outer knees, press your knees into your hands. So you're creating an isometric action here. All right, so this will strengthen the arms as well as strengthen the legs. All right. And now let the knee pressing into the hand dominate. So your knees are slowly coming down. And then let the arms win. So the knees are slowly coming up. And then release, take down dasana. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And exhale, lower your arms out and down. Now bring the back of the knees uh, now, to create a little bit more space behind your knees, anytime you have difficulty with your knees, you need to look up a joint or down a joint. So it may have to do with your ankle or it may have to do with your hip if you're having discomfort with your knees. So let's take a very linear approach. So you're bringing your calf flesh away from the back of the knee and your hamstring away from the back of the knee and then begin to close that area. So your heel is coming towards the blanket. Take the back of the knee, open it up by taking the calf away and the hamstring away, and then bringing your heel towards the blanket. And then pull up on the shin, press down into the heel, and bring your side ribs forward and up. Now, if you find an appealing sensation on your back body, Enhance that with your breath by breathing in, taking the back ribs up, reaching out through the back of the elbows, descending the buttock bones and the heels down as you exhale, and lifting up through your trunk as you inhale. Now, if you feel something tense up, that's the key. Ah, I'm working too hard. So find effortless effort. Relax the action of the arms if you're tensing up in the neck area because the arms really tie into the neck and the shoulders, right? 
So the other key, because um, even though we're working today below the waist, as far as uh, opening the joints and working through some of that restrictive movement of the hips, the knees, and the feet, uh, some of you mentioned that your neck and your shoulders are really, that's your tougher area. Be mindful in the postures when we put our hands on blocks or on our legs, like in triangle pose. Notice if you load too much weight into your hands, because that can transfer into your neck and shoulders also. Now, raise your arms up and reach forward as much as you can. So as you press into your heels, the legs draw back and make way for the chest to come forward. Now, if you feel like you're rounding too much in your upper chest, you bring blocks in to leverage the chest up. And I'll rotate so you can see a little bit more of that action. So here we were taking ourselves forward. You can raise your arms up and then ground the heels to take the legs back. Have your hands on a block to lift the sternum up, spin the triceps underneath. And then as you go further forward, you can possibly come out. So if it just feels like you are restricted from moving forward, maybe sidestep your feet a little wider. All right? And as you begin to shift out, can you slide off of your blanket and begin to load more weight into the legs and feel just the action of your ribs moving down inside the inner thighs. Gaze softly at a point either between the blocks or towards the floor where your head is in line with the spine. Now, if you're someone who tends to be very flexible here, you can take your hands down to the floor and begin to bring your elbows towards your front ankle. And as you take your elbows slightly out to the side, you can begin to lift your heels and lean into the back of the arms. So this is starting to bring the chest through the inner thighs even more. So you're using gravity to take on a little bit more of a stretch of the inner groins. And then push off the hands, come back down. Inhale, raise your arms up, press the heels down. And then take yourself back into Dandasana. And then with your feet slightly separated, rock your feet back and forth like windshield wipers. Take your feet a little further apart and see if you can Rotate the legs in and touch your toes and observe that that's difficult. Ah, the inward rotation. And then turn the feet out. And this is the outward rotation. So just notice what's easier and what's harder. Inward and outward. Some days are going to be this, some days are going to be this. Or you might just be a consistent one directional person. Now, come back into an easy bend of the knees, be in the center of your blanket. And can you bring the knees together? All right, maybe you can, maybe you can. If that's really challenging, put a block between the knees. All right. I actually like having a block between the knees because then it gives you a bit more space to inwardly rotate the legs. So you can take your hands to the back of the thighs and spin the thigh flesh from the inner groin to the outer hip. Now, sidestep your feet a little wider. Have your hands back behind if you need more support for the lifted chest. And then squeeze the block. Because squeezing the block is a little easier than having your knees knocked together. That's always not terribly pleasant, right? And then as I take my feet wider, I have to bring them back. It just feels unnatural having them so far away. So maybe you can take your feet a little wider. And boy, do I feel my outer hips now, right? I have a lot, I have a, a very big nodding head 
in the top left corner of my TV. <laughs> now, can you stay stable? Raise your arms up. Oh, now we know we're not relying on our arms. Maybe somebody's leaning into their couch though, but that's all right. <laughs> no, that wasn't you, Claudia. I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> and then release the arms out and down and then take your block away and let your knees go back and forth, lift the legs and extend into Dandasana. Now squeeze the outer thighs in. That probably feels really good after that lovely expression. And then lift the legs, Sukhasana. Round the thighs down, broaden the collarbones, reach the inner elbows back. So that's one way to uh, work a little bit of the outward rotation and opening the inner groins and stretching the outer hips with the inward rotation. So just to review, you had your Baddha Konasana with the lift and lowering of the knees. And if you want to join me again, we can go through it real quick. So as you take your hands back behind, support the lift of your chest so you're not working the chest or forgetting about it and you raise and lower knee. So there's that. And then you take your hands to the outer knees and isometrically press one into the other. So you're strengthening the muscles of the legs. Okay. If you wanna open up more, we didn't do this per se, you can rotate forward in the pelvis and reach the inner thighs out. And then you take a bit of a break and extend the legs out and dundas. And it's always good to regroup and extend the legs out. And then we took an opening of the back of the knee by taking the hamstring down and the calf down away from the back of the knee to bring the heel close. And we took a strong lift and a forward extension. Blocks optional beneath the hands. And then as we drew the elbows towards the ankles, we splayed the elbows out to the side so we could project the shins back with the arms. And if you wanted to come off of the blanket and onto your heels and let a little bit more weight come into the back of the arm to draw the thigh bones back beyond the side ribs, and then coming back out, lift the shins, Dandasana. And then lift the back of the knees, feet as wide as the mat, take a block between your knees and squeeze. Take the feet wider and squeeze. Take the feet wider and squeeze. Maybe you got a little wider. Oop, that's tricky on my knee, so I'm not gonna do that. Cross the forearms and lift. And then exhale and release out. Take the block. And done last one. Outer thighs in, reach your inner heels. And then reverse cross Sukhasana. Ground the thighs down. And there you have it. So I know some of you have that outer hip tightness. And I know what the pose is that gives you that issue. So let's see if that opening sequence gave you a little bit more space to play with that opening of the inner groin. So turn your blanket so that you have a corner of your blanket forward. Right. And we will start with the right leg on top. So take your left leg underneath so it lines up with the edge of the blanket. And your knees are right in the midline of your body here. Now, take your right foot across and then see if it just relaxedly 
you have this outward rotation. So you just go bit by bit and then cross the knee on top of one another. So here's go Mukasana legs. So the knees cross in the middle, so that's a little easier. Now, if it's still not open enough to let the knees lie on one another, huh? there you go, it's better, right? Now, if you lift the chest and come forward, keep the outer hips drawing back, and you can have your hands on blocks or on the floor, extending out, Standing out, drawing the outer hips back. This is a great way to release a whole lot of stuff in those outer hips. And any mount come out. So this is a modified Gomukhasana. So if you're not feeling any particular release in your outer hips, you can lower your seat by first removing one blanket or if you wanna go even further, removing both blankets. So if you want more of a stretch in these outer hips, that, that's what you do. Okay. And then coming back up, uncross the legs, second side, taking the right foot underneath the left, lining your knee up with the middle of your body, and then slowly testing the water bringing your left leg across, bringing it back behind the knee, and then letting it release, spinning the left leg. You can extend the left thigh out of the hip socket, turn the left thigh, and slide your knee across. So you're sitting in between the heels of your feet, and then extend out over the legs. There you go. Nice. Extending the arms out, let the head hang, keep the inner arms lifting up. So the hips can affect also your lower back, believe it or not. Because when you stretch some of this glute area here across the back of the pelvis, it will affect your lower back. So the knee is the alarm bell for your hips. But again, if your hips are tight, it's gonna affect your knees. And if your weight in your feet is not necessarily evenly distributed, it will affect your knees also. So now let's unwind, extend the legs out, Dandasana, and work a little bit with our feet. So taking your legs back into that Malasana-like position, you can, Lift your toes and see the arches lift. Now I know that that's kind of hard to see from here. So I'm gonna get a little creative today and see how it works because I might as well have a little bit of fun, right? That was kind of thematically the quality. So don't get dizzy because I'm gonna move the camera. Let's see how this works. Here. Oh. See how far down I can get. Now, so very creative, more stable. So if I'm here and I collapse my arch, right? I collapse my arch. You can see. The outer ankles turn in. However, if I lift the toes, if I lift the toes, right? I won't be so knock kneed for one, because my knees will roll in. Let's see if I get it just right. So my knees will roll in, they roll in this way. So if you lift your toes right now as you're sitting, you'll see and possibly feel the, the arch of your, the arch is left, right? 
These are like little push-ups. And you also feel your, when you're standing, your thighs will enroll. Now, that's all well and good. You also find your big toe mound pretty clearly pressing into the floor. So I hope you're doing this. Some of your feet are off camera, all right? Now, when it comes to really getting your arches to lift, I know some of you have heard me say this, but if you, you know that action where you take a towel. So do this with your foot right now and feel how that really begins to lift the muscles in your arches. Okay. And it also involves a whole lot of your bones, right? And you can feel it going all the way up your leg. Now there's another movement that's very helpful which is this one. Now these two moves are from a PT prescription for strengthening your arches if you have an Achilles situation, right? Where they teach you to be able to take a towel, but if you take a piece of fabric, this is a towel, but this is my scarf, as you can see, and you draw it around and over. So that's, once you know what the action is, you don't really need the towel there anymore, right? Now, if you incorporate those two actions into your feet, when you lift your toes, it won't just be a very dull, unintelligent action of your feet and your legs. So, so you don't lose it, just come to stand without thinking too much about it. Because so I would take you into downward dog from child's pose to do more of a, a sequencing thing. But I really want you to incorporate this so that you could feel it in your legs. So right now, as you stand, and I'll get a look. Well, this is not working. But right now, just stand and feel your feet without thinking too much about it. Find Tadasana. Now, just lift your toes. All right, it's pretty pronounced in my big toe mound. That's all I really feel. And I feel a little bit of engagement in my front thighs. And then lower the feet back down. Now, start to do that action like you're trying to pull the towel or the scarf towards the wall behind you. Okay, you got that? Now let your toes relax. Can you make your arches lift without gripping the mat with your toes? Can you lift your kneecaps and lift your thighs, lift your chest and stretch through your arms? Does it give your legs a little bit more life and do you feel more stability in your knees? I see one nodding head and a good thumbs, two thumbs up. All right, that's good. Now, Take the action first with one foot. You can't do it with both feet at the same time. Only if you're sitting and having coffee can you do the action at the same time with both feet. All right, and then do your other foot. Because when we go in the back leg where you take your inner arch towards your outer heel, so take your inner arch towards your outer heel, it's similar to that action, where you kind of suction cup the arch up without gripping your toes. So look at your feet for a minute, stand without thinking about it, and then start to draw your arches up through the inner ankle as if you were pulling the towel towards the wall behind, and then draw the inner arch towards the outer heel as if you were doing this scooping underneath, and then lift your thighs and your chest and stretch down through the fingertips. And then gently lift your toes up so you're incorporating all three actions and then release your toes back down. And notice 
what the legs feel like. They might feel more stable. Inhale, stretch your arms forward, out and up. Palms face the wall you're looking at. Lengthen the back ribs up. Exhale, lower the arms out and I feel stronger in my legs and lighter on my feet without strain. For me, this is effortless effort. So I hope it opened the door just into a slightly different way of being within your legs. All right, so it may or may not be easy to find the next time. Uh, so right now, we're going to move ourselves back into being on the floor, but this time, begin in Tadasana at one end of your mat, towards the rear, we're going to take a standing forward bend, Uttanasana, and then we are going to take downward dog, walking our hands out. And keep your awareness simply in the action of the arches of your feet. Hands on your outer hips, lift and open your chest. Exhale, begin to extend forward from the tops of the thighs and notice the sensation of your feet. What do you need to do with your arches? Do you need to lift up through the inner ankle? Do you need to take the inner arch towards the outer heel? The pulse behind the knee then, by all means, bend the leg. Let your head hang. You can even at this point watch your arches. And the right foot and the left foot, don't assume they're going to do the same thing. Are you gripping the mat with your toes? Let your hands come to the floor. Spread your fingers equidistant. Just let your palms be on the mat evenly. No weight in the hands. Just let them be there. Now, as we walk out, if your legs are straight, you can keep the weight even in the soles of the feet. Until such time as you walk your hands out, palms taking the weight that you need to lift your heels. For those of you with bent legs, you lift the heels immediately and walk all the way out into your downward dog. Let your head hang. Once you get into your full position, then again, check in with the sensation of the arches in your feet. Can you lift your inner arch up through the inner ankle, through the inner knee, through the inner groins? Do you need to take your inner arch toward your outer heel? Do you need to find the big toe mound of your feet? Now check, are the knees in the center line of your foot? Are the front thigh and the back of your thigh lifting evenly? When you can no longer sustain the pose, exhale into child's pose. When you come into child's pose, have the toes touching evenly. Draw your outer heels in. Draw your outer knees in. And you may feel a little bit more sensation on your outer shin. Now, find a block to use for this next round of downward dog. And in this next round of downward dog, we're going to place a block 
between the inner thoughts. And in doing so, we're going to ignite the action of the thoughts. So coming into table position, I'm going to bring the knees together and have the block mid thigh. And then as I come up, I'm going to squeeze the block and position my feet so that it reflects the width of my legs that's produced by the squeezing of the block. All right, so I won't strain the knees. And then outwardly rotate the arms, squeeze the block, lift the block up towards the pelvis and then draw the block towards the wall behind as I take the extension of the arms, the front of the thighs back and the reach of the front ankle towards the heel. Keep the life of your arches and take five to seven long breaths here before walking your hands back towards your feet. So squeeze the block, bring the block towards the pelvis and towards the back of the room. Reach your front ankle towards your back heel. Keep the lift of your arches and then begin to walk your hands back towards your feet slowly, feeling the integrity of your legs, bend the knees as you need to. And then find your hands to your hips and inhale and come up slowly, squeezing the block. Inhale, lift your chest and stretch down through your fingertips. Tanas. And then bend the legs, taking the block away. Hold the block right in your abdomen, hooking your fingers, draw back on the block to open those shoulders. Okay. So let us take triangle and move directly from triangle into extended side angle. So have a block to either side of your mat. Wide stance. <clears throat> so as you start to articulate the arches a little bit more, you may find that you can take a wider stance, that you feel more stable in the knees. So right now, this might be your normal stance, okay? Take yourself in a little bit and articulate the lift of those arches. And notice if you feel a little bit more support on the inner and outer knees. Maybe you feel a little bit more life on the inner thumbs. Okay. And then take yourself back into the stance you started in. Can you pull in a little bit more of that stability? And then turn your feet to the right. So lift the inner arch up through the inner ankle in the front leg and the back leg. Ever so slightly in your back leg, take the inner arch towards the outer heel. Inhale, lift your chest, stretch through your arms, and now take your right hip towards your left, hand to the block. If the block's too low, just let your hand be on your leg. Now for those of us who have tight shoulders, notice if you're putting too much weight into the right hand. You may need to lower your block and use your legs more. Reach up through that left arm. Turn the abdomen towards the ceiling. Take your gaze upwards. On an exhalation, bend your right leg, sweep the left arm over. Ground through the right heel. Keep the lift of your inner arches. And in the left leg, take your inner arch towards your outer heel. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Trikonasana. Exhale. Parasvakanasana. And then inhale and come back up. Turn your feet to parallel. Notice your arches. Notice the stability of your legs. Take your hands to the back of the pelvis and draw 
the back of the pelvis down, lift up through your chest. Inhale, take your sternum towards your chin, and then we're going to exhale, rotate forward, let your hands slide down the legs, four wide leg forward bend. Prasarita Padottanasana. When you can go no further, pull up on the legs, bend the elbows out to the side, keep the sternum extending downwards. And then inhale and come back up. Once again, sidestep in just a little bit. Really feel the lift of the arches coming up. You can take your toes up a little bit. Integrate all three of those actions we worked on. The lift of the arch up through the inner ankle, the inner arch towards the outer heel and the lift of the toes and then settle the toes back out and down, no toe gripping. And then take yourself out into your stance you started with. If you wanna go a little wider just to test the waters because you feel as though you've mastered it, what can you do in a slightly wider stance? Really works with the sides, right? Extend out through your arms, turn your right foot in, spin your left leg out 90 degrees. Inner right arch towards the outer right heel, lift the arches of both feet, exhale left thigh towards the right, reaching out, find your block, extend the left arch out away from the left, Step. Reach to the right arm. Make sure you're not putting too much weight into that left hand. Use your legs. If you want to go deeper into your left hamstring, turn the block down. Take your gaze upwards. As you plant your feet, exhale. As you lift your arches, lift your kneecaps, inhale. Exhale, bend your left leg, sweep the right arm over alongside your ear. Keep the parts Inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, bend your left leg. Inhale, straighten your left leg. Exhale, bend your left leg one more time. Good, good, good. And then inhale and come back up. And then your option, if this is a little wide for you, sidestep in a little bit, continue all the way to Tadasan or jump Tadasan. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now, take your chair in to play. and have maybe one or two blocks, it just all depends. Sit right on the edge of your chair, press your thighs down with the heels of your hands. So we have a slight turnout of the thighs. And what we're looking to do is again, go back into that place where we're starting to get the side ribs to go down a little further between the inner thighs without aggressing into those hips. <clears throat> because you don't want to grind into the area. Using your exhalation to fall into it is going to be a better place, more sustainable place. Again, the position of extension and lengthening out will serve you so much better whenever you're trying to create more space in a joint capsule, <clears throat> or even one that's not really a capsule. I mean, your hip is a clear ball and socket. So if you're extending a leg away from the pelvis, you'll have more room for the topography of your top of thigh bone to move. In the shoulder region, it's three bones adjacent to one another held by ligaments and muscles. And it's a pretty interesting little jigsaw puzzle, which we can talk about another day, but you've got like a hook on the top of your shoulder blade, and then you've got your arm bone that's here, and then the collarbone comes in, and you've got all these things winding up and around. And our shoulder does a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So if your arm bone isn't back enough, it's going to hit something. So you do wonder why we have shoulder issues, especially when we sleep at night. 
Thank goodness we don't hold our phones like this anymore. Or do we? <laughs> so first come down and let your arms hang out over the side of the, the, the thighs. Yeah, do your, do your best silver back impersonation. For those of you that admire the, that particular species. Now, here, extend your arms out in front so that you can begin to feel the potential for letting your side ribs drop down. Now, if you're already running into your blocks, then by all means, just use one block, but see if you can disappear between your legs. And when you get to a point where your head is supported by a block, you can just hang out here. So at first you might be a bit rounded in the upper chest, but just stay here. My, you may not be able to see this, so I'm gonna move my leg. Um, <clears throat> so as I come down, I've got a little bit of space beneath my elbow. So the weight of my arms is bringing the side ribs near my armpit down. Okay. I'm pressing into my heels to keep the sitting bones drawing back so that I can inhale and reach the sternum out. And as I exhale, I just let go and see where I go. So stay here for another four to five breaths before taking your hands to your thighs and using your arms to come back to sit up. So as you exhale, ground your heels. As you inhale, you reach out through your sternum. Your head is supported by a block. And when you're done with those five breaths, hands to the tops of the thighs, straighten your arms and pause. And then come fully back up and turn so that the back of your chair is to the right side of your body. And we'll take a very simple broad vajasan. Plant the feet, buttock bones down, inhale, lift your chest, broaden out through the collarbones, reach for your elbows and turn, turn, turn. Exhale, walk around so that the chair is to the left side of your body, ground down through your heels, down through your body bones, inhale, lift your chest. Exhale and turn, look over your left shoulder. Inhale, scoop your abdomen in and up. Exhale, turn, turn, turn. And then release. Now, some of us are longer in the shins in proportion to the chair than others. <clears throat> now, um, there's a couple of ways to do this. There's one where we sit completely in the chair. Um, so how many, okay. So some of you have backs on your folding chair, yes? Folding chairs, there's a back, there's a back, there's a back, there's a back, there's a back. Okay, so we will do it as if there's backs on the chair. Okay, so put your chair to the right side of your mat. And if you are a little taller, I'm 5'7", so I need a blanket on the chair to actually feel as though I am supported on the underside of my thigh. If you're a little shorter than I am, you may not need it, but you wanna feel as though you've got your, there's no space between the back of your thigh and the chair or the blanket when you're sitting all the way back. You're good, Claudia, yeah, good, good. All right, now, so what we are going to do is we are going to do warrior one into warrior two. And, um, 
it's just a really nice way to feel supported and open the hips in such a way that takes the work out of the front leg and all the focus into the hip and groin opening of the back leg. And you get a little bit of the front leg in Warrior too, but nonetheless, it's kind of fun, right? We, we like fun when it's chaotic and I don't know about you, but it's been chaotic on my end in my world. Now, so let your left leg go off to the left. So it's just the right thigh that's supported on the edge of the chair. So you have your left buttock bone off and lean over your right leg and begin to extend your left leg back, All right? Your right forearm is on the back of the chair. Your left hand is on the edge of the chair and you have your left leg in line as if you were standing in Tadasana. Now, keep the tailbone moving down, extend your sternum out, inhale, and slowly begin to bring your shoulders up over your hips and press your right heel down. So you're lengthening out and lifting the sternum and coming up and then sweep your left arm up. So here we are in warrior one. Your left heel is like downward dog. Okay. So stay, take a few breaths, press your right forearm down to lift the right side of the body. Now, if it's a little edgy on that front thigh, or if you feel like, ah, I don't know what's going on in that left hip, you bend your knee and let your left hip just drop down. So if you want a little bit more space, and everybody can try this, just let your left knee drop down towards the floor and really let the back of the pelvis descend. Does that make more sense, Nancy? Kind of, sort of. Yeah, because it seemed like you were being thrusted forward when you straightened your leg. So if you just let the left leg bend, then you can, oh, here it is. I'm not as caught up in my right hip. And then slowly, as you let that left thigh descend the left hip, you extend back through your leg and then you start to feel, oh, there's that tightness. So you can just bend and straighten the leg. You don't have to straighten it fully. And that's how you work it, especially with the reach of the arm. And if you're pretty stable here, ground your right heel and take both arms up. And then you get a good inner groin stretch. Now warrior one starts to stretch both because you're turning the foot. So let's see if you can turn your left heel out as if to attempt to put it on the floor. And as you do so, take the left foot parallel to the end of the mat, open your arms out into warrior two. Lift the arch of both feet. Yeah, that's where you need to have maybe uh, a little bit more of a blanket, Beth, if you feel like you're kind of falling off. Open your right knee back. If there's a hitch in your hip, you may have to inwardly rotate this left leg. Now, if it's just too much, you just be on the inner edge of your left foot. I think we were doing this on Thursday, right? Yeah. And then lie down over your right thigh. Bring yourself into a nice little ball. Press into your legs. Inhale, come up. And then you stand up, move to the other side. And we go for second side. Because I can't leave you lopsided. My teacher, who's a bit older than I am, when I first started working with him, we were doing adult ed over at uh, Smithtown uh, East. And in the gym and he used to say well I can't let you walk out of here like John Wayne of course we all knew the reference and I think we still all do because we're most of us are old enough to remember that now lean out over your left leg slide the right foot back so you're in a nice lunge here and the reason why this all works when you turn it open is that your thigh is parallel to the floor so if you don't have enough support underneath that left thigh, then you know you have to lift it up. So if you got a hitch in your hip, you lift your thigh up so you're a little higher. Now, your 
Right hand is on the corner of the chair. Your left hand is on the back of the chair. Your left heel is grounding. Now extend back through the right thigh, reach out through your sternum, inhale and come up here. Raise your right arm up. Now, if you get pinchy in here, what do you do? You bend the knee. Let the back of the pelvis descend down and you bend and straighten the leg, right? Keep your right hand on the back of the pelvis. So you work out the tightness of the psoas of the front thigh. Right? And when that starts to work itself out, because this is a great, quad so as stretch right in here. And then you see what you can get. Maybe the leg isn't straight. Take the other arm up if you're balanced on your chin. And then open yourself back up, outwardly rotating the right foot, sweeping the arms out parallel to the floor. Draw your left knee back. If you want a feeling of what the pose is like, ground the feet vigorously as if to get light on your chair. Maybe you lift up, maybe you see what it's like to be this low. Then you sit back down. Good. And then find your way back into lying down over that left thigh. Inhale and come up. Oh. Press the thighs down. Take your heels underneath the chair. Rotate forward slightly. Sweep your arms forward and up. And hover over your chair and utkatasana. Inhale, straighten your legs. Exhale, lower the arms out and down. Fantastic. So very, very, very nice way to stretch and open. Now, there is a, uh, a wonderful variation of shoulder balance that can be done for those of us that only stay in high bridge. Um, it's fun. It's a little different than doing, say, Supta Virasana, because you can get some of this in Supta Virasana. But if you were doing high bridge, what I would recommend is those of you that go into shoulder balance, have your typical blanket assembly set up, your two or your three blankets for shoulder balance. If you are someone with herniated discs and you're not going up for shoulder balance, this is what I would recommend, which is just one blanket, all right? But I'm gonna put up all three so I can shoulder, show the shoulder balance variation of this. Now, the name of the variation is Ekapada Setubandasana because I'm sure all of you are very curious about what the position is. So you could look it up in the back of Laya Yoga. Eka Pada, Eka means one, Pada means leg or foot. Setu Bandha is uh, typically, Setu Bandha is going to be bridge pose. And there's a whole variety of bridge poses. Uh, we have the one where we're extending out with the blankets under our back body and blocks underneath the back of the calves. We have a simple bridge pose. We have uh, a supported bridge pose with blocks underneath the sacrum. We can do the extended bridge pose with a block under the sacrum and a block under the calves. Um, there's just a tremendous variety. So anytime you hear Setu Bandha, Setubandasana, it's more than likely going to be a variation of bridge pose. Now, when it comes to utilizing the chair, it's always a hip challenge because you have to get close enough to hold the legs of the chair. So if your feet are on the outside of the chair, that's the key. If you have a wall 
or a couch, that way you know your chair is not going to move on you, which is very helpful when you're looking for the chair at the very end. Um, when you're dealing with having a blanket in addition to a chair, sometimes it gets a little bit more complicated because you're dealing with two props rather than just one. So your head is on the floor, your shoulders are on the blankets, and your hands are on the legs of the chair to start. So this is the variation for those of you with herniated discs. You do not go up into shoulder balance if you are with that structural configuration of a herniated disc. So my heels press down, the back of the pelvis comes up, and I spin the triceps underneath. So if it just feels like I'm not getting the drawing of my arms underneath that I want, I take my hands up just a little higher on the chair, and that way I have a binding quality going on. <clears throat> Now, from here, you do want to feel as though you're pressing down into the seat of the chair. Now, it just all depends on where you're at vis-a-vis -vis your neck. So, you want to have your feet pressing down, all right? If you have the ability to take the heels of your feet to the edge of the chair, that's a good thing because I know my feet are not going to slide. If you have fabric on the seat of your folding chair, that's a good thing. If it's a metal one, the heels of your feet on the front edge of the chair is best. All right? So if you are someone with the herniated neck, you're going to take your leg out, extend it, and take it up and press into the foot that's on the seat of the chair. So you have a line of your leg that's somewhere in this range. So you're not really taking weight into the shoulders it's staying mostly in the legs, okay? So as you extend out through the leg and you lift your hip up, you're getting a stretch, a mild stretch in this thigh. And then you can come back down, move out, and take a nice shavasana, right? Now, if you are someone that's going up fully, you can start here with your feet on the edge of the chair and come up. Bring the sternum toward your chin. Hands into the back ribs. Put the feet to the center. And now you're extending one leg out <clears throat> over your face, right? So this is taking on the sensation of the pose that eventually would have your foot on the floor. Okay. And then you trade out. The tailbone draws up into the body as you take your other leg out over your face. Okay. And then come up fully for Savangasana. Okay. So the full pose involves a very deep See if I can avoid the chair here. Yep. A very deep back bend where your foot's on the floor and your leg is up. Ekapada Satyubandasana. Okay. That's a full pose. But we need to work into that. <clears throat> to understand the sensations in the body, right? So, <clears throat> up you go. Find your footing on your chair. You're going into shoulder balance. Have your foot on the front edge of the chair. You're going into the variation for herniated discs. Have your foot on the back rail of the chair and come up on an exhalation with the tailbone lifting up and forward into the body, sternum towards the chin. Stay here for a few breaths so that the muscles on the back of the shoulders can adjust 
and open. Keep the lift at the back of the pelvis. And now for the variation, for those of you that are herniated, you can keep your hands on the back of the pelvis, but leave it on the buttock flesh and extend your leg out closer to the line of the bent leg and reach strongly through the heel. For those of you that are shoulder balanced uh, people, you're going to take your foot to the, both feet to the center of the chair and have one foot pressing down into the chair while the other leg comes up and over your face parallel to the floor. So you get a very big stretch in that, that leg. And then switch your legs. Stay there for an equal amount of time stretching the opposite front thigh. And then whenever you're ready, take your hands a little lower if possible and using the counterweight of the straight leg, come up into shoulder balance. For those of you in the herniated disc or not going up into full shoulder balance variation, come down and rest in chair Shavasana with your shoulder blades on the ground and your arms off of the blankets and your calves on the seat of the chair. For those of you in shoulder balance, if you would like to work more of the uh, work we were doing with opening the hips, you can take Harzva Aikapada, which is generated by turning the thigh of the right leg out, letting the foot follow so that you extend your right leg out over the line of your right shoulder. and then bring the leg back up. Outwardly rotate the left thigh. Let the le rest of the leg follow and bring that left leg out over the line of the left shoulder. For those of you in chair Shavasana, you can find any additional blankets or pillows or bolsters or sandbags that you have to put over your shins or your abdomen, blocks work. And then Baddha Kanasan, shoulder balance people, soles of the feet together. And as you outwardly rotate both thighs, take the tailbone towards the midline of the body and the back of the pelvis up. And then keeping your thighs in this position, straighten your legs out, taking the toes to the floor for Supta Panasana. And then into Halasana. If you feel as though you can roll out of your pose and avoid the chair, by all means roll out of your pose now and to chair Shavasana with the chair a little closer to you and your shoulder blades on the floor. One thing that's really nice is if you lift the chair and put the front two legs of the chair on your blanket assembly, it tilts the chair. Oh, that looks fine. Claudia, yeah, it looks, it looks good just proportionally for you because it might be too high if you put it up on the blankets. Yeah, you look just perfect. Find a place of peace 
and grounding and rest. As you bring your awareness to your breath, Letting everything go. Moving your fingers and toes as you take a nice breath in. Draw your knees towards your chest, letting the props fall where they may. Roll to your right side and lie heavy. Using your arms, press into the floor and come to sit up. Palms together in front of your heart and back. Namaste. <laughs>